So finally, we are in live. Um, Assalamu alaikum and a very welcome and a very welcome and a very warm welcome, everyone. I hope all of you are doing great. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Mahmoud Ahab, an intern of Community of Biotechnology and your host for today's session. Community of Biotechnology is a nonprofit organization based in Bangladesh, providing numerous opportunities to students from all aspects of biological sciences around the world to participate and engage in multiple activities. We have organized many international events alongside several webinars. However, our to the session for today is quite insightful and engaging about a topic that plays a significant role in our agriculture growth condition in Bangladesh. Our topic for today's session is Punchy Willy Dice and Climate Smart Agriculture. It will be covered by none other than Dr. Abed Choudhury. Dr. Abed Choudhury is an Australian Bangladeshi geneticist and scientist writer with publications in both Bengali and English. He has worked on a broad spectrum of projects related to agriculture, science, starting from isolating the fertilized sovereign seed genes to perennial rice and its benefits after alteration. Along with that, currently he is the head of research innovation in Loam Bio. As we are already aware, he is one of the greatest assets for our country, Bangladesh, since he has played a significant role in making our agriculture industry more accomplished. Dr. Abed Choudhury is also an influential thinker and invention, inventions converting his home place, Kani Kathi, which is uh, resident in Isilet, into a rural hub of intellectual activity, particularly in educational improvement and reform, and is continuously working for it and is known as a Kanihati experiment. His work on research and innovations is never ending, and we hope this list will continue forever. So I would like to stop here and give our honorable guest the floor. Before I do so, I would like to thank Ab Abed sir for investing his precious time for us despite having such a busy schedule and within such a short span of time. Thank you so much, sir. You may continue the session now. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here and to be talking about some something very urgent at the moment in the world, which is climate change and how we can respond to climate change via agriculture. And what climate, what relationship climate change has to agriculture, and how we can actually use agriculture itself to to solve some of the pressing problems of climate change. So I think if if you are able to show the slides, that would be most yes, useful. Yes, sir. I can structure my talk in the context of some of the slides that I have prepared. Uh, definitely, sir. Give me a moment. Okay, maybe, do you want me to talk? Okay, that's good. All right. Yeah, so so what I would like to cover is, is talk about climate smart agriculture. Climate smart because it's a new kind of agriculture that addresses the issues of climate change and basically provides, and, and not just that, but provides a pathway of coming out of the climate change by using agriculture. And, and in this context, I want to introduce a major innovation that we came up with in the village of Kanihati, and that is Panchabrihi rice. And the platform that I have used over the last 20 years to develop this work is what I call Krishan Foundation Proprietary Limited, which is established in Australia, but it, it is the concept of Krishan, which are the farmers. So there is a Krishan entity in Bangladesh as well. So the next slide, please. Can you show the next slide here? Okay. 
So this is something I, I took from a very famous movie called the Kiss the Ground, which talks about climate change in a most dramatic way. And I think this this screenshot of a actually the picture of a TV screen when this movie was being shown lays out the problem very dramatically. As you can see, what is what is being plotted here is the level of carbon dioxide starting in 1970, 1980, 1990, and going all the way up to a point where it is virtually close to the tipping point. And then it then it projects the expectation or the hope that we will be able to bring it down in in the beyond uh, this period of 2020 which is at the moment which is now so if that is the highest point 2021 and 22 how how can we bring it down and this process of bringing it down is called drawdown so what drawdown is the is the is also known as negative emission it is the reduction of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and bring it bring it down to a level that is um, better for the for the earth so it is not just reducing our emission because that is not enough because only to, already too much carbon dioxide has gone to the atmosphere so we have to actively remove that co2 and that is called the drawdown next slide please so how do we do the drawdown? As, we, as you know, the plants use carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and converts it into sugar by a process called photosynthesis by using the sunlight. So this is the engine of drawdown. The more photosynthesis occurs, the more carbon dioxide gets fixed and comes back into the atmosphere. But the problem is, even if we have the maximum capacity of photosynthesis, a considerable part of carbon dioxide comes out again and goes into the atmosphere. So the net gain is not very high. But but this this kind of this slide kind of lays out the engine where the plants play a very central role. So what we what we want to do is not only we want to deploy the plant to do the to the drawdown, which is taking CO2 and bringing it to the soil. We must take steps so that the soil becomes an actual storehouse of the carbon dioxide now turn into very stable carbon and stays there for a very long period. That is our goal. Next slide, please. And happily, this slide shows that the soil has the capability of bringing in all the carbon dioxide, extra ones, that has gone to the atmosphere. So if we know how to bring it back, the soil has the capacity to store it forever. And indeed, soil contains in it more stored carbon than all that than the whole atmosphere and the biosphere combined so soil is a very powerful repository potential repository of storing carbon and this process is known as soil carbon sequestration next slide please so here i'm showing a very very pretty picture of in my village in my experimental plot we have just made the rice seedling. As you can see that we have sprinkled the rice grain in there and then the very, very beautiful green seedlings have come up. This is the beginning of rice cultivation. Next slide, please. And he here we are showing you a historic picture where you can see the rice has been harvested all over the field, except for the square patch, as, as you can see where the second crop has come from the wasted straw. So normally, normally, as, as you can see far distant everywhere, people have harvested the rice and the straw is left in the field to just stay there and get degraded. But we, we have come up with a technology whereby the straw now grows back and makes grain. And as you can see this harvest, this harvest is not very big, unfortunately, because this is the almond harvest. And this is already in the middle of winter. Next slide, please. But nonetheless, our farmers are harvesting a second crop. It has never ever happened in this area ever before. This is the first time the farmers are getting a second harvest, which has come from the straw, the old straw that has already been harvested before. So now you are looking at a, 
a harvest that is the second one. And the first harvest occurred about 60 days ago, two months ago. And two months later, the remnants of the straw, which is normally just garbage, which is just degraded. And some people even burn it. And in, in India, they burn it in a big way, creating huge environmental problems. But here we have tri tricked the plant into giving us a second harvest, which is about two tons per hectare in Amman. So this is a very massive development, and this is an unprecedented development in my area and maybe in whole of Bangladesh, because I'm not aware of a agronomically significant harvest, which is the second harvest from rice. Next slide, please. So how did we do this? Uh, about 20 years ago, 15 to 20 years ago, I deployed a rural a village-based uh, breeding system, R&D system. Here you can see three of our workers, they're crossing rice, they're crossing one rice with another rice. And this is not happening in any research institute. This is happening in the middle of the village. As you can see behind them is the, is the rice field. And these workers, we taught them, the, these farmers, how to cross one variety of rice with another. Next slide, please. And as a result of this, we developed what we call the multi-harvest rice. Example of that I showed you before. That was for Amon in the middle of winter. Now I'm showing you something, a plant, is a group of plant, which is now poised to give the fifth harvest. So these group of plants have already given four harvest in succession, starting from early in the year. So February onwards, and this is close to October where they're uh, they've become pancha brihi, we call it brihi being rice. So egg brihi, dui brihi, thin brihi, char brihi, pancha brihi. So these are, the, these are the plants and in an amazing way, and this is a very major biology, development in biology or discovery in biology, that as this harvest has continued, the plant has become bigger and bigger. And now you are looking at an extremely uh, highly fertile group of plants which are panchabrihi plants. Next slide, please. And you can see this, uh, this amazing plant where you can see at the bottom it contains, it becomes a big gucha. It's a cluster of, uh, because it carries in it the remnants of five lives. And now it's the fifth, four lives, past lives, where it grew, it was harvested, it grew again, it was harvested. But the remnant of the previous life, they're all there. So one seedling, now has become a major, major uh, gucha, as we say in Bangla. And it is so full of grain that I sent it to some Chinese breeders and very high powered hybrid breeders. And they said they have never seen a plant like this before. So this is a major development whereby we have learned how to make the rice plant give multiple harvest. And in the process of giving successive harvest, we have, we have uh, train the plant to become extremely uh, fertile with huge number of grain. Next slide, please. So, so I want to pause there and just reiterate to you that we have achieved something very significant, which has never been achieved before, which is that we have for the first time made rice give five harvest, starting from February all the way up to October. What it mean, and then at the end of the day, the plant that I've just showed you, if you add up the whole uh, harvest of this uh, panchabrihi, there are 16 of them. Uh, some of them, the, the, the productivity exceeds 20 tons per hectare and could be even more because if you can, as you can have seen, uh, the level of growth this plant has encountered. If we deploy it properly in successive years, I mean, this is the first time we saw it. The yield will even exceed 20 tons. So I want to stop there and turn into another issue. So why do we want to do it? As you can understand that we have planted only once and harvested five times. That means we have we have done plow, we have plowed the land, we have done the plowing of the land only once. And four times we have simply harvested without having to plow again. So every time you plow, carbon dioxide gets released into the atmosphere. So if we were to deploy panchabrihi all over Bangladesh, it will become 
hugely reduced tilling. It will not be zero tilling because you have to till once in the beginning of the year. But the successive crops will be no till. And on a per kilogram or per ton basis, it will virtually remove tilling almost completely, 80%. And it will become basically climate smart agriculture because it is due to the tilling that the CO2 that the plants work so hard to photosynthesize into, into the soil is actually taken back into the atmosphere again due to tilling. So we must reduce tilling. This particular slide that you, you are showing right now is a plant called dhoncha, which is a which is a legume and it actually fixes biological nitrogen. One of the major problem of climate uh, climate change is that it agriculture releases huge amount of nitrous oxide also and other greenhouse gas and that happens because of use of chemical fertilizer. So we want to only have biological fertilizer if possible. So I'm trialing in my village this plant called Dhoncha, which is a which is a nitrogen fixing plant. And what these plants have that they underneath in the root, there are nodules which are fixing nitrogen. So they are actually making uh, soil uh, produce green nitrogen as opposed to chemical nitrogen, which is the biological nitrogen fixation. This is a so this is an integral part of smart agriculture. So what we want to do in future is that we want to we want to have in the same field these dhoncha plant growing together with rice, where the nitrogen fertilizer of rice will not come from chemical fertilizer, but from the from the dhoncha uh, as it uh, enriches the soil with nitrogen. Next slide, please. So. So another thing we do, there is a, a lentil in Bangladesh called Keshari, which also a nitrogen fixing plant. And what you are seeing here is that we also, I, I should tell you that we also do lamb breeding in that village. And we are doing some experiment whereby we we feed the this uh, grass pea, feed the grass pea to the lamb and the lamb eats on grass pea as much as it wants. And then we remove the lamb and then these grass pig will grow, grow up again and fixes nitrogen. So we put grazing because we want to feed the animals as well as feed us. So we want to create a situation where the grazing initially occurs, where the animals can eat as much as they want. And these plants then bounce back and give us a proper crop. And imagine that in this condition, so these are small experiments where we have, um, brought in our lamb and the lamb is having a good feast on this, uh, what we call the ground cover. And this ground cover does two things. One is that because the ground is covered, carbon dioxide is not released into the atmosphere and it's fixing nitrogen and bringing nitrogen into the soil. And then in the middle of it, we will plant our rice. We will not dig the soil. It will be no-till ground cover where the grazing has already occurred, so the animals have eaten. And then we plant our cereals, our rice, our wheat, our sorghum, etc. Next slide, please. And finally, all this work, we want to come bring under the umbrella of precision agriculture. What the precision agriculture means is that everything will be measured and it will be measured using the satellite information, the drone information, as well as what we call the proximal uh, internet of things, IoT devices, which will measure the level of nitrogen in the soil. It will send a text message to the farmer saying where nitrogen is high, where nitrogen is low. We will fly the drone over this field. We will aggregate thousands of farmers together so, so the whole field can be monitored through drone and through satellite technology. And this whole uh, work that we plan to do in, in my area in future will bring in the era of precision agriculture, which is also a computational agriculture because this will generate big data. And from the satellite data, we will see the uh, whether the crop is going to be infected by disease or whether the crop requires some nitrogen or phosphorus or potassium all this information we'll get from the satellite imagery. And together with what we are in the, doing in the ground, as I have told you, 
Panchabrihi rice, ground cover, etc. We are looking at the very detailed level onto the soil and making the change through genetics and through knowledge of these, uh, these crops. But then we are going into the stratospheric height and we are using the satellite data and the drone data as well as the IoT data, which will measure specific things in the soil. And we'll marry the genetics, the agronomy, and the, and the measurement uh, using these devices together into a new uh, paradigm, which we call precision agriculture. And that will be truly the climate smart agriculture of the future. Next one. And I just wanted to show you that there has been a huge level of publicity uh, of my work all over Bangladesh. And this is one of the film. If you just Google in Bangla, you'll get many, many videos which has covered this story very well. So I'll end here and take questions. I hope everyone could hear me well, but I have yes, to say, sir. yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for such an informative session. So I would like to request our audience uh, to put up their questions in the comment section below so that I can read, uh, so that they can appear on the screen and so that I can read out to Abed, sir, so that we can have a good session report now. Uh, waiting for a few minutes for a few questions. Uh, one comment from Nadi Mahmood. It's a, it's a it's great. He has a, a mentioned about the session, sir. Um, Nadi Mahmood has a question, sir. So in this five variety, which is the best? Yeah, actually, uh, panchabrihi means it can be cut five times. So variety, actually, we have sixteen varieties. And obviously, some are uh, one of them is number one and two and three. So we are going into the second year now. This was the first time it was done last year that we have pushed it to the level of five harvest. Uh, we have some rank order and we are going to repeat it. So in science, you always have to repeat it for the second time. Yeah, someone is asking questions. Sure. Yeah, yes, you can sir. just type the question. That's all, that's all right. Yes, sir. Uh, Shonja Chandra Betarji, you can just write the comments in the com you can just write the questions in the comment box and we can I can just read out them for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's very convenient. I I can read it directly myself. So if you if yeah. you can type, we can see the question. Yeah. So waiting for more questions. So the question is from Ashmita Roy. What are the challenges you are facing during this experiment? Well, the challenge now is that how to make this seed available to 87,000 villages. Because as I have declared uh, repeatedly that I am not interested in doing any business with this technology. I want this to be available to farmers in 87,000 villages. I, I believe that it will revolutionize the agriculture and particularly the smallholders who at the moment um, not getting enough uh, rice for all their investment. Uh, one thing I have observed all my life that people who are doing agriculture, the real farmers, they don't have a decent living. They don't make enough money to have a good living. And I, I myself encountered it, and I want to put a stop to this situation. So the challenge is how how do I reach out to everyone? That is the challenge. That's such a novel uh, initiative for you, sir. Uh, so waiting for more questions. Uh, another question from Fahim Faisal. Can we grow any? Indeed. Indeed, we can. Because these are um, like 
my village is just a typical village. We, our country is not really that that large, so we don't have huge geographical difference. The only thing I would require, uh, most of the Panchabri has been rain fed. We have not irrigated, except the first time when we started the Bureau, we had to do some irrigation. So the only limitation that I can think of is, obviously if, the, if a storm comes and completely destroys the field, then it's a problem. But other than that, only thing we need to supply or is needed. If the rain rain is not as much as this year, then we need some irrigation. Yeah. Uh, Sneha is actually thanking you for such a wonderful talk, sir. Well, the talk was very gent very general, and it doesn't uh, have senior work in conserving uh, scented yes, right Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we collect from everywhere. I have been collecting for about 20 years and my fridge has a lot of rice varieties. I basically, this year I planted about 300 varieties. I, I took it out of my freezer, which was sitting there for 15 years. And this year I planted everything. So whatever I ever had, because I don't want to go on and on for another 15 years, keeping it in my freezer. So everything is out now. And I, I look forward to passing it on to the people of Bangladesh and people such as you. Uh, so so another challenge is that I need a lot of participants who will step forward and want to do agriculture. I want the city people, fashionable people, people who wear good clothes and everything. I want them to do agriculture. I want them to sort of look back into their history and find that maybe their grandfather was doing agriculture. And I want this modern city young people such as you to to embrace agriculture to be proud of agriculture to go back to the village and do agriculture that's what i want certainly we will do that in future sir so next question is from mr uh, mohammad amil islam such a such as a nice talk sir how is the variety can develop resistant pattern against the pathogens in the agricultural field because when it goes for a long time in the field, sometimes there are a lot of pathogens can affect its ill. Yeah, I know this is written in textbook, but it is not true. In fact, these plants become super strong and resistant as they are cut and they grow up again and they show tremendous resistance. So I have, I was aware of it. I have not seen it. I have not seen any pathogen infestation. However, there is a problem when you have unseasonal rice. When so, so rice was happening all through the year in odd time. And uh, one of the challenges is to uh, prevent the birds from attacking it. So when you have rice in the field, which is not the time of rice, then birds will come. So we, we, face, we did face a little bit of bird attack. Uh, but if, if it is done in the whole field, bird only comes and attacks if it's a bit of rice. If the whole field has rice, if we are going to do panchaprihi in the whole field, then there will be no bird solution. I think the pathogenicity, pokamakor, you know, all these things are written in textbooks. And I know a lot of agriculturists have read in these books and they are repeating it. But I'm sure they have not done the experiment themselves. They're simply repeating what someone else has said. And they have memorized it, they have studied it, and now they are repeating it. And I can tell them that it is not true. Another, another thing everyone is saying that the yield will go down because in the book it says that the yield should go down, but they have not done the experiment themselves. So when they will see Panchabrihi this year, they can come and see, yield does not go down. And I have shown you plant, no one has seen a rice plant like this. You cannot make a rice plant like this with, you know, by putting some rice together or something. This is an incredible sight, actually, that, that such a rise has been created by this process. Thank you so much, sir. So there is another question from Salman, sir. Excellent work, sir. Is there any large-scale government support or at least ongoing discussion for reaching out to the farmers? Uh, not that I am aware of. I, I work myself. No one pays me any money. I, I work overseas and then deploy this money to to work in my village. This is what I've been, I have been doing for last 20 years. So uh, 
I, I don't know anything about government support or anything like that. It's it's something I have told myself I was going to do, develop it, and then in my own cost, make it available to 87,000 villages. Mm -hmm. So I concentrate on doing that bit. Uh, beyond that, I don't know. Yeah. All right, sir. So, so I think we have reached uh, to the end of the session. So, however, before we are bidding a goodbye, I would like to thank you, Dr. Abed Choudhury, on behalf of Community of Biotechnology, for making the webinar so enjoyable yet insightful at the same time. And of course, our enthusiastic audience who have flooded us with questions, who have allowed us to understand it, the session even more and to know even more from, the, from an expert like you. So with that note, I would like to hear uh, what 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 you have to say, Mr. Abid, sir? Thank you very much. I, I really enjoyed being here. I have passed on the slides over to you, so you can pass it around to whoever wants it to, to send the slides over. And if you uh, if anybody has any question, you have my email address, so you can send me an email. And I'm hoping again that because of my um, discussion today people will come forward and actually do something on the ground because we 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 do real things we cannot just do a seminar and walk away and and you know do something else i i expect everyone to be to go back to the root to the ground and do some good agriculture for the country and the society and for our own posterity i i i really urge everyone to do that uh, thank you so much, sir. With that note, I would like to say we would love to work with you on uh, in the in the field, and hopefully, uh, people like me would also will would love to work with you, sir. So, with that note, I'm bidding you a goodbye to you, sir. Thank you thank so you. much, and thank I'm you, bidding goodbye to all the audience as well. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, wonderful.